Hi, it's Mike Stevenson here. We're going to have a look at um, some other examples of the things we could do with ChatGPT and Logic Apps. In this video, I wanted to explore how feasible it was to generate documentation from my Logic App using ChatGPT. Now, just a caveat here, um, this is just a proof of concept, um, just to show what we could do. Um, I'm not suggesting that we do this in the real world because um, in the example, I'm going to send the code from a logic app to ChatGPT uh, and kind of get it to interpret that and tell me information about the logic app. Now, in the real world, your logic app might have parameters in it with sensitive data, so you probably wouldn't want to do this. Um, maybe in the future, we can use an Azure service to explore options for doing that where you would be within your trust boundary so that you would be comfortable doing that. But for the for the sake of the demo today, we're really just looking at the art of the possible. Over here in my Logic Apps, um, I've got this Logic App document, uh, um, Logic App that I've created, and I've, I've got a um, like a Logic App that I've, I've set up with a bunch of calls to ChatGPT to ask it to tell me information about a Logic App now. Just want to show the output first. So here I've got a bunch of pages in Azure DevOps where I've documented some logic apps. So for example, if we take a look at this one here, so the things that I've asked to do is to, at the top here, tell me the intention of the logic app. So you can see here, it's looked at this logic app and it's said it'll receive data from partner A, creates a file in data lake storage, appends data to it, uses the HTTP action to authenticate, um, appends data, flushes it. And, and this one's basically a logic app that basically writes to um, Azure Data Lake. You can see there's a bit of data about the logic app, so some of the key data at the top. Um, just to note, what, what how I've done this is I've really queried um, my logic app via Azure Resource Graph. So some of the data at the top here, this key details I can work this out and then as we go down so this this one hasn't got any log, uh, tags so we'll look at that on another example the overview um is really tell me what's going on in this logic app with a step-by-step flow as you can see here it says um client secrets are set we do a call um to authenticate we pass the token and then we make some calls to the storage app i've asked it about the complexity so it said, oh, there's 10 actions, there's no loops, um, no maps, some, there's some variables. I've asked it to then um, create a mermaid sequence diagram. So you can see there's a bunch of stuff about what's going on here. And there's a flow chart. Um, so I think if I show this one here, it's got a bit more, of a, like the, this one's got a bit more of a clearer flow chart. So I think there might be some challenges generating the diagram here, but you can see this sort of tells what's going on and you can see there's a, a sequence diagram here now obviously you know over time i'm sure tech like chat gpt will get better at being able to to do these kind of things and the idea of what we really want is a microsoft model that gets trained understanding the context of a logic app so it would get really good at doing this whereas chat gpt is obviously a very generic model for all sorts of stuff but the fact it can generate any diagram at all that remotely resembles the logic apps, kind of pretty cool. Um, so I guess, uh, I think, see if I can just show one that's got tags. I think this one here has got some tags on. So this one actually worked out that there's a bunch of tags on that logic app and it's given me a table of them here. So, you know, you can see um, it, it's actually given me quite a lot of stuff here. Some of it's really useful, some of it's, um, you know, a bit of a work in progress, you know, I mean, this, this diagram actually is not bad for that logic app. You can see the, the flow chart one was challenging to generate for it, but it's, it's kind of getting there. Now, let's have a look at how we've done this. So what I'm doing is I'm receiving a request um, which contains a little bit of data about the about the logic app to um, query. So you can see in the run history here, it's telling me the resource group the resource ID and the name of the logic app. Now, what I actually did over here is um, I've got this kind of parent logic app that I can just run and it'll go and do a 
resource graph query and get a list of all of my logic apps in City of said get all the resources where it's a workflow pass in the subscription ID and then I can just loop over them and make a call to the one that documents an individual logic app which is this one here so in the designer I'm going and doing a couple of things. The first thing I do is I go and query from resource graph that logic app itself. And then using the parse JSON, I'm, I'm looking for a few bits of information here that I'm going to use for the, the key details section, which we'll look at in a minute now. What I'm doing is I've, I've got this helper logic app. That's basically the, the same logic app I used in the map demo video um, a few days back, just to make it to encapsulate that call to chat GPT um, just so I can reuse it. So what I'm doing here is I've said, um, can you work out the intention of this logic app? And I've just passed the body of um, of the result from that um, call to the, to the resource graph API. And that basically comes back with this bit at the top. So in this case, the intention of the logic app is to check if if it's the user's birthday, return a response, and a bunch of other stuff. So that, that's actually kind of not bad for um, for what that logic app actually does. You can see here the intention of this logic app is to simulate a real car shipment, update its shipment status, loaded, ship delivered, tax. I mean, that, that actually is a pretty good um, guess at the intention of that logic app. It's generating random values. So this one here, if anybody saw my... Um, my Azure Bootcamp or Integration Bootcamp demo a few months ago. Um, this was the logic app that actually drove the load for that demo. So that's actually really good, a good guess at what the intention of that logic is. App is. So I'm pretty chuffed at that. Um, so the next thing we do is we go and we start building up this string variable. So at the top, I'm just putting here's the intention. And this, looks, this is going to be the content for my DevOps wiki page. I'm then going to add the details for the logic apps. You can see I've just built a, a markup table here, populating some of that data from the um, the resource graph. Next, I want to do the tags. So I'm saying, can you convert the below JSON object to a table in markdown format, but can you make the table vertical rather than horizontal? And then I just pass the tags from resource graph. I mean, there's a couple of different ways you could do this. You know, you could very easily just do a map for this. Uh, but I wanted to just explore what, uh, you know, if ChatGPT could actually do it. So this is where we end up with this table. I think in this case, it's not really understood that that logic app didn't have tags on it and just giving me a dummy table back. Whereas up here, the, these are the legit tags that run it. So this is where I think somebody asked a really great question on my LinkedIn post a few days ago about how reliable it was. And this is where, because it's a generic model, you know, you're going to get some occasional spurious results there. But if you've got tags, it will work them out from the looks of it. So I add my tags to the string variable then i go right give me an overview of the logic app so can you describe the high level sequence of events in the logic app definition and i've asked it to ignore variable actions and then i'm going to stick that in the overview section so this is where we get this bit here so it's giving me a bit of info here i think uh, a better one's probably uh yeah, this one here telling me a bit about what's going on. Yeah, so again, we, we get this overview, which, you know, that's okay. Um, next up, complexity. So I've said, right, I'm trying to work out the complexity of this logic. How many actions are in it? Does it contain loops? Are there any conditions? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I pass in the logic app body. And then you can see here, I just append it to my page. So the output I'm getting here is how many actions? There's 20. Does it contain loops? Yes, there's an until loop. There are multiple conditions, but it's difficult to give the account the exact count because they would be embedded in actions. So that would be conditions within the loop. So, you know, pretty smart there. Doesn't use an integration account, no scheme. There's 13 variables. Um, three compose actions. Um, it can tell me how long the file is, but it's difficult to give it an exact code count of things. Okay, so 
we add that to the so here i'm building up my mermaid diagram and i want one thing that i did do here for my mermaid diagram so i said please ignore the initial the initialization variable uh, actions where we initialize a variable i've given it the logic app definition i've asked it to ignore certain shapes can you describe the high level sequence of events using a mermaid sequence diagram in a format that can be pasted into a devops wiki um i've also said remove the so what i found is um it, it adds these tags on here which um i think it assumes that i might be pasting it into something else so i've took them off and i've just replaced them here um in, in the documentation bit and the same with a flow chart it's pretty much the same i've just asked it to use a flow chart instead um so this is where we get you can see that the sequence diagram is quite big there so if we look at this one you see it's a little bit clearer um now i think you know thinking about what the art of the possible is here this is where we if we can work out how to clean up that um definition and just get diagrams a bit like this and get rid of all the noise that would be really handy uh, but obviously that that's where a specialized logic app model would work really well okay so next up we've got the devops bit so here i'm doing a look up to say is there a devops page um already existing for the with the name so here i'm passing the name of the logic app and I've got to continue on error so that if I get a 404, I know the page um, does or doesn't exist. And then I just do an upsert here. So passing the name of the page. And if there's an e tag from the, the look of the existing page, I'll just use that to match it. And then it'll either insert or update the page. Mm -hmm. And here I'm, I'm just passing in the content, which will um, set the content. And that's how I end up with with these pages here so you can see you know that's not a bad attempt i mean it, it's not perfect by any means but it shows that there's some potential mileage in the idea i really like that it's kind of worked out what i'm what the intention of my logic app is and it can give me these overviews and here you know we get like a, a bit of a step by step on the complexity and stuff so hopefully you know in the future we might be able to do a lot more really cool stuff with this um, as I say, just to repeat the warning at the start, um, you know, you don't you don't probably want to send your logic app definitions to chat GPT because you may have sensitive data in them. Um, so you might want to wait until there's a Microsoft model we can use or maybe explore what options in um, Azure AI as opposed to an external one. Thank you very much for listening.